Hello and welcome to the Mega Bread Van channel. Now we finally got around to doing the review of 2023. So let's go. Let's get into the into the van and we'll have a little chat. So we're a bit late this year. That's where we were last year. Um, my useless seat cover, it's not easy to sit on. I suppose this is a bit chilly today, this evening. Uh, yeah, so uh, last year I did a, a review, um, year before that as well. Uh, no, I didn't do one year before that. Um, yeah, 2021 uh, wasn't a brilliant year, so we didn't do one. So yeah, uh, so this year, uh, finally getting around to it in the middle of February. Um, which is probably about half of the course. It was the same last year as well. So the idea really is just to go over what we've done on the channel and um, the various things that uh, have happened. Not necessarily all to do with Mega Bread Fun because this channel is also dealing with a few transport related videos and uh, there is a site um, with transport photographs, megabreadvan.space if you'd like to take a look. So we'll start off with uh, the garage. The idea really is for me to try to work undercover because there are a few things that need doing um, on Mega Bread Van itself at the front, um, notably around the engine compartment and stuff like that. Uh, as you'll see from uh, a few of these clips, we sort of progressed last year. Uh, got the um, place tidied up so we could actually find things. And uh, yeah, it wasn't wasn't too bad. But since then, obviously, we've had to move things about. Um, we've got house number two, which is where I am at the moment, which we're trying to sort out too. And of course, we need to store things. So unfortunately, those things get stored into our garage. And although it's relatively tidy, uh, I have to still find stuff. Um, there are things in the way. So that's an ongoing thing, an ongoing project. So a few other regular videos have been the dash cam videos. Uh, as you've seen, um, I did probably two or three um, since last year. Uh, well, there have been other dash cam videos as well, but it was just uh, basically sticking the, the dash cam in the in the uh, the van and just shooting whatever. But uh, now I've started to come up with a, a thing where um, I use some uh, sort of mems to illustrate things a bit more. Uh, so from now on you'll see a few occasional dash cam videos of me driving now why am I doing dash cam videos and why are they usually the same route or the same place I'm going to well um, if you don't know this channel I bought this van in 2018 um, to basically learn to drive in 1990 uh, I started uh, dr taking driving lessons was it 91? No, it was 91. 1991. Um, and I did 30 lessons and I wasn't uh, particularly good. I was a bit of a nervous uh, driver. And that, together with money, financial concerns and stuff, because it was was not cheap. Um, and uh, I suddenly stopped. Well, I was working for a bus company where I got free travel uh, as part of the perks of my job. So I never really learned to drive. Uh, and then I fast forward, I moved here uh, in 1997 and that became a problem because I moved from living on the edge of a city in the UK uh, to moving to sort of semi-rural, out in the sticks, Paris region. And it's always been a problem um, with me not being able to drive. Um, for a time... Um, back in the mid 2000s, it's 2005, I think it was. For a couple of years, two or three years, I had a scooter, 50cc scooter. Now, a 50cc scooter has the same licensing as this van. Uh, they're both some what are called some permi, so you don't need a, a driver's license to either ride a 50cc scooter or drive this van uh, or a similar some permi car. So that means that uh, it's quite good in France. You just well, if you're above a certain age, in, you know, born between um, no before sorry, 1988, you just need to get insurance and you can drive a van. For younger generations, and now put in place um, some driving tuition, which lasts something like 
five, seven hours, something like that, uh, just to prove they can drive safely. Uh, so it's not a driving test. As time goes on, I need to go further and further away from home. And um, basically, these webcam videos, webcam, does it say webcam? I thought it said webcam, webcam. Um, webcam videos are there to help me to, um, well, learn to drive in effect. But it's just been a long process for various other reasons. Um, if you look on the channel, you will find out what these reasons are. From now on, there's going to be regular webcam videos. And what I tend to do is, um, when I arrive at about uh, an hour's worth of footage, I'll whittle it all down and try to create uh, a video of, sort of 15, 20 minutes, uh, no more than that. So in April and May last year, we went off to the UK, um, which is what we tend to do in the springtime. Obviously, with the pandemic, um, we weren't able to go to the UK, um, and I've got a health condition that meant that uh, COVID um, put a few restrictions on on his uh, sort of getting over there pretty quickly uh, when restrictions started to be lifted. Um, basically, uh, we managed to get over there four years after the last time in 2019. Uh, I mainly visited my hometown of Leicester. And um, we stay in the same place each time. Even though there's a four-year gap, we still managed to rent the same place. And uh, it's a case of just going to see a couple of friends. But um, on this visit, I was keen to get some footage of a then new hop bus service which is a new electric bus service um, it's a circular route round the city centre of Leicester which I don't know whether it is now but at the time it was free so I did some footage of that and that was a bit of fun um, it's quite nice to have a free service but it's also quite convenient to be able to to go from where we'll drop it off by the park and ride uh, and take them round the uh, city centre to where I wanted to get off to go and do a bit of shopping and for me to take some photographs of the various local buses and the bus scene and uh, also took some footage where we were staying which is right in the middle of the sticks um, surrounded by fields of sheep, cows it's really a nice little place and uh, we had some tame uh, pheasants that came to visit every day for their breakfast so that was it was all good fun apart from that we went to uh, go and see the Leicester King Power Leicester City Football Stadium so that was kind of fun my son is quite keen on football and uh, we thought we'd give him a bit of a treat and so we had a tour of the King Power Stadium uh, it was really impressive so that was uh, our visit to the UK and hopefully this year we'll be going again in April. Same place, visiting the same place, going to see the same people hopefully. But nothing lined up just yet as to what we're going to do. Normally there's uh, another bus event, Leicester Transport Spectacular, which is held at Quorn Great Central Railway. Um, it's only the second time I've been, the last time was in 2019, ironically. And uh, yeah, so um, normally that take place, takes place sorry, in May and um, we're going in April, so we're just going to miss it by a few weeks. But I did go to the, the last one, which is in September. And of course, we can't forget it was the King's Coronation um, when we were over. So that was while we were visiting the stadium, by the way. So we actually saw a tiny bit before leaving and then um, a little bit more at the stadium. But um, because of this coronation, the event at Quorn Great Central Railway was uh, cancelled last May and brought forward, or yeah, brought forward to September. So I went to the September one, which is something else I'll cover later on in the video. Well, that's, I don't know you can hear that, but uh, that sounded interesting. Um, my next door neighbour is somebody... Ooh, my next door neighbour is somebody that uh, renovates cars. And uh, years and years ago, I helped him sorting some um, body panels for Lancia Fulvia. Made in Wales, the body panels, by a one-man 
uh, band. He was machined everything himself. So that was kind of interesting. Um, anyway, I digress. Uh, so we came back to France and I think it was in uh, June we went to uh, an event called the Gasoline Festival. Now the Gasoline Festival is um, a massive car event held just to the southeast of Orléans. Uh, it's not too far away from us, probably about an hour, hour and a half away by car. Um, and it's a big magazine here, Gasoline. Um, I don't know if you've heard of it or not, but uh, if you ever come to France, obviously it's going to be in French, but just for the pictures alone, it's worth buying. In each issue, they just cram, cram it full of loads and loads and loads of interesting articles about classic uh, cars, um, mechanics, and just general love of classic vehicles, um, not just French ones. This event is well worth going to. It's the second time we've been. Uh, we managed to go in uh, 2022. Um, I can remember that both years we really did suffer with the sun quite a bit because it's, it's actually held on an, a race course so um, there's no shelter, there's very little shelter there and uh, this time around we came sort of ready prepared but I think it got to the stage this time that we knew from the last time when we suffered uh, particularly Madame MB, she was not too good we just said, OK, when we start to feel really uncomfortable we're going so we managed uh, a couple of hours at the event and uh, I took a video for that my friend Adam has a 3d printer and he's a very generous person in offering his services to produce things um, you know he's just a really wonderful guy and uh, I count him as a very good friend so I'm very lucky to to have this outlet where uh, he offers to to make me things like the holder on this camera holding my um, mic kit on it and the adapter on the side and all this sort of thing so yeah and the next well the next project we're not even done it yet we started measuring things but it was a fuse box now this started because um, my van is well since I bought it has always had a few electrical issues um, and in the end the issues were not that serious but it took a little bit of me thinking about what could be causing it uh, mainly starting up was a bit slow um, it took probably three or four attempts to start uh, in the end we replaced the battery which improved things a little bit it needed doing uh, even though obviously batteries are not exactly cheap but this time round I thought well I needed to find out what each fuse was going to do in the van um, and I was very lucky in that I had Simon and Janet who I met on then it was Twitter and then now X who kindly sent me um, a manuals just not just for the phase two like this one but a phase one um, and they were really very useful uh, in helping me to work out what fuse did what and I found uh, opening up the fuse box which was hidden underneath the dashboard um, one of the fuses actually melted slightly so it probably was over, long overdue that um, you know, I had a look so basically I uh, decided to replace all of the fuses with new ones clean all the contacts and this is where the 3D printing comes in because the accessibility of the fuse box is not exactly the most brilliant thing on this van like I said it's tucked away underneath the dashboard I had to lie on the on the floor in the cab to be able to actually see it and this is not ideal so I was talking to Adam and we're this was back in well after June 2023 that we were going to do a cover you know an actual box that can fit on the outside of the dashboard to hold the fuse box so that I can actually see the fuses just by taking the cover off rather than going underneath and trying to to find them in all the the jumble, jumble under there so that was one of the jobs that uh, we were planning to do it never got done we measured everything i've still got the measurements and hopefully that will be a job that will get done pretty soon so we're going a bit further forward now to august and we had a trip down to the southwest of france to Brantome. Um, you'll notice on this channel Branton will be mentioned quite a lot 
Now Brantum is a town uh, in the Dordogne, or the Perigord if you want to be more exact, Perigord Ver, the green part of the Perigord. It's the hometown of my father-in-law, um, unfortunately sadly no longer with us. In fact that's his car behind me, as was, uh, Rano Kangu. Um, and so um, because he was from the area he still had a place down there um, which has been in the family for quite some time I think it's something like uh, three or four generations now and so it's a regular place we go to um, and at the moment it seems every August we go down there and I love it because you get lots of classic cars floating about not just at car shows but actually in the street um, and also I like to take pictures of things like Renault 5s, Peugeot 205s, Twingos all the the little simple cars, uh, simple French cars that will no doubt be disappearing at some point. While we were down there we went to a car event um, which was at Menestrol, Montpont Menestrol I always forget what it's called, Montpont Menestrol which is towards Ribarac so you need to look at your maps to find that but it was an event that wasn't for me widely publicised um, I don't know where we, we found it I think it was Madame MB that came across it and we were going to go and we thought you know it's, it's going to be it's in, it's in the middle of nowhere it's going to be a tiny thing and it wasn't it, was, it wasn't massive but it was more than I was expecting so I did a video about that event, um, basically filming the, the vehicles that were there and there was lots of interesting stuff. Uh, it was really quite impressive. Um, my friend Nigel came over from the UK, so he came to join us with his dog Riley um, and uh, we had a really, really nice time. Uh, we also went on a, a boat trip around uh, Brantom. Now Brantom is uh, called the Venice du Perigord and the reason it is called that is because the river drone goes it's a buckle that goes around the town and then goes around the north and then the south of it is like a canal with a weir at each end so it's surrounded by water and uh, so it's it's quite pretty you know it attracts lots and lots of tourists so that was a really nice trip to to take Nigel on to show him uh, you know around the town and everything and it's well worth visiting along with the other thousands of people that go. So if you've been on the channel recently you might have noticed that I've done some shorts um, about um, a sort of another 3D printed item by Adam, uh, a sort of shuttle to hold an auxiliary battery pack uh, which will fit in the dashboard of Mega Breadvan. Now the idea being was uh, for me to, I don't know, I, I just sort of I spent a stupid amount of money on an auxiliary battery pack after seeing one or a, a bigger one than I, one I bought basically but the idea was sort of the same but seeing one on a channel called Me and Mon Ami Tim and Mr Boo who are based down on the French Riviera uh, a place that um, we've known a little bit um, more uh, Madame and Big's family because my father-in-law um, used to own uh, a flat down there in Antibes so I've been there once uh, a long long time ago uh, back in I think it was 2010 trying to gauge it on my son's birthday so I think he was three and we celebrated his birthday there on uh, me and mon ami sorry there was um, uh, an auxiliary pack which I thought was a brilliant idea um, the channel is about uh, Citroen Ami, the Nouvelle Ami, and um, it's a Saint Permis like Mega Bread fan. Um, so I decided to buy this uh, All Powers S200 battery pack, thinking that I could power things that need a bit more power uh, or things that might drain the 12 volt battery a bit too much. Now, there's no clock radio in my van, I don't really want one. Uh, not when um, I can use my phone and a, um, a sort of Bluetooth speaker to to listen to music despite the noise of the Kubota engine the diesel engine is quite noisy at the moment Adam has actually produced the shuttle um, so you, if you look at the shorts you'll see that 
I haven't fitted it properly yet, but um, you know it's, it's an ongoing project and it was started last year. So um, after we've sorted that out, then we'll sort out the fuse box. So as I mentioned earlier, we went to the Leicester Bus Extravaganza uh, in Quorn, which is uh, where the Great Central Railway have a station. Uh, in fact, the line runs from uh, Loughborough Central uh, down to, I think it's Leicester North Station. I think it's near Burstall from what I remember. I'm not a really big fan of trains, but I'm a big fan of buses. Um, I mean, the trains are very nice and all that, but uh, unusually, I'm a bus enthusiast that went from cars to buses um, and not from trains to buses or buses to trains, which a lot of people tend to do. A lot of enthusiasts tend to do. So I went off to the event. It was an interesting thing to go and see. Um, as I said earlier, it was sort of postponed back in May due to King Charles and his coronation. And um, it was, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I hadn't been since 2019. And that was the first bus rally I've been to since, I think, 2002, which was at Showbus. So I was able to bump into a few people, um, went with my friend Nigel, who came with us to to Brantom. Um, I stopped over at his place, so that was really nice of him to to put me up. Um, really enjoyed uh, being back uh, in my hometown. Um, it was a bit marred by the fact I'd hurt my foot coming down on the on the train. Um, so in the end, I mean, I only went for the weekend, so in the end, I just tried to look after my foot and um, so I could go to the event. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed the event, uh, took a, a lot of video. Unfortunately, um, for some reason, uh, I knocked off the uh, Rocksteady feature on the camera, so everything was a bit wobbly, so I was a bit sort of disappointed. But um, yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed riding on some old buses, lots of nostalgia, Buses I rode on when I went to, to school, went to work. Uh, buses I remember from when I was very little, when I lived in Hinckley uh, in Leicestershire. Hinckley is uh, sort of very west of Leicestershire on the border with Warwickshire. Um, so lots and lots of memories. I really, really enjoyed the event. So lastly, because uh, it seems like I haven't actually done much on the van this last year, um, apart from the fuses and various um, 3D printing bits and pieces. Uh, I managed to sort out the tyres because I haven't pumped them up since I bought the van in 2018. And uh, I didn't know what uh, what bar they were to be pumped up to. Um, thankfully, I had the, the manual that uh, Simon and Janet sent me uh, for the phase two. So that was able to help me to, to tell what uh, figure I could get up to with the tyres depending on whether it's loaded or whether the van's loaded or not. It was quite good because I was able to try out my Lidl bought um, cigarette lighter tyre pump and uh, I was quite pleased with that so that worked out really well. So now we've got to the end of the year regarding video. Um, I wanted to go over a few future projects so um, for the minute we have things that need to be done on the inside of the, the cab home comforts and that sort of thing. So we spoke about the uh, the battery shuttle, the fuse box, fitting in some wiring to to power that up, a new light as well, because the light was uh, was damaged um, beyond repair for me. Uh, even if the light worked, the actual holder on the light was uh, just broken. Uh, so all that's been done. Uh, that was probably the last thing I did uh, last year. Um, and so I got to think about things like soundproofing. Um, the floor needs sorting out because uh, I'm getting sick and tired of, of getting into the van in this weather when it's wet and damp and my feet slipping on the floor because there's no um, covering or anything like that. So I was thinking perhaps I could use uh, some rubber matting I bought quite a while ago again from Lidl, I tend to buy a lot of things from Lidl, but I want to probably attach it with Velcro rather than glue it down onto the floor. So that's another thing I need to do. So I've got one video that's outstanding from last year. Um, that was a visit to an event called American Dream Cars, which was in Mency, not too far away from here. 
uh, each year, um, I think it was the first one this last year since the pandemic. I think um, um, there hadn't been one for quite some time. Uh, I think the last event I went to of the American Dream Cars was probably getting on for 10 years ago. Um, possibly a little more recent. I can't remember the exact year. I think it was probably 2016, I think. So, yeah, it's been a while since I've been to it. Back then, it was held on a place called um, Parc Villois, which is a massive park not too far away from us. It's between Mency and where I live. And uh, it was a really nice event, but it was very, very, very over oversubscribed. Lots of vehicles and lots and lots and lots of people. So last year, uh, they held it on a car park, a, a supermarket car park. And uh, I took a few bits of video, I took lots of photos, and I was in two minds about what to do with it because um, I was thinking... I don't really want to start doing photo slideshows in my videos anymore, which I've done in the past. Um, you know, the vehicle safari videos, if you look far back when I went to, when we went to Brantom, uh, and we've been to Normandy and so on, um, I did lots of these slideshow videos of photos of cars and vans and trucks and things I'd seen. And um, I think that um, those will probably have to come to an end so at this event, the American Dream Cars event, I've taken a few clips of video and, you know, I didn't really want to put any photos in. So uh, it's going to be a very short film, but it will give you a flavour of what uh, the event is about. Uh, so that's one that was, that's outstanding from last year. Uh, another one that's outstanding off the top of my head was uh, one of the, the ones from Corn. One of the videos from when I went to the... Leicester Bush extravaganza at uh, the Great Central Railway. Um, so that was um, uh, one of the many bus ride videos I did. Um, but this was uh, on a favourite bus of mine called uh, Leyland Leopard BET style uh, bus, dual purpose bus. Um, and I like to do a video about the general type of bus using some of the the ride footage. So those are a few things that uh, are sort of outstanding. So I'm surprised that the lighting is good enough for me to film because it's now getting on for six o'clock and I saw on my phone earlier that uh, sunset is at 6.10 and uh, looking, I've got my screen on the front of the camera here on my DJI Osmo um, GoPro camera and I can see myself quite clearly. So I'm hoping that when I get the footage back and start editing it, it's going to come out okay. Uh, we're now up to about 360 subscribers, which is, is great for me. I thank all of you for, for following me and subscribing, and I hope that uh, we can continue into 2023. I'm getting a bit cold here, and uh, carry on with uh, doing stuff on the van. So, the last time, take care of yourselves. See you in the video. Bye.